Hello everyone and welcome back to Filmbook Trailers, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's News Desk, and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry website that reports on the film and TV show industries in the United States and across the world. If you like our trailer reactions, please like this reaction video as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box and you're all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash filmbook. Now, let's watch and react to the third trailer for House of the Dragon. I like the way the throne looks now. Looks good. I like how there's blood on it. Which is what makes it so cool. <laughs> oh. Too bad. That looks great. I am very much looking forward to, and I couldn't, I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but I'm actually looking forward to this new um, Game of Thrones TV series. I was absolutely disgusted by the last two seasons of Game of Thrones, especially the last one. It was just. I've never seen two writers hamstring themselves and blow up their own legacy so much like like the two writers and creators of Game of Thrones did with the last two seasons of uh, Game of Thrones when they were just trying to end the series and get away from the series. If they were tired of making the series, they'd been on the series for 10 years, I understand, and they wanted to get away. They should have just walked away and gave it to... Um, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, let him be the showrunner for the for the series or someone else. But instead, they sabotage their own series. They rush characters. They rush storylines. They brought in characters that hadn't been on screen in years and just came. They just brought them back in, then killed them off. And then they just they just ground the series into the ground. And that's why everybody has so much apathy and is uh, has like a tepid reaction to like House of the Dragon right now because they think that that's going to happen again. Like some people don't even know that this new showrunner behind this series. But 
I'm in the know, so I know that. I know that those two screenwriters and creators from the first series are not part of this. So, and I've seen the passion of the person who brought this to life along with uh, George R.R. Martin. So I, I'm going to give this a chance. I'm going to give this a a naked chance, so to speak. A chance, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at it with fresh eyes without thinking about the last two writers on the last two on the, on the last series. I'm just going to th- take this as it, as it is. If I'm able to get this, if I, if I'm able to get a uh, screener of this before it drops uh, next month, then I'll be putting out a, an advanced review for it. Hopefully I can, but on to this uh, trailer reaction. I, as I said before, this looks very good. Uh, they had a lot of options for, a potential Game of Thrones series. Uh, they had one that was based around the Long Night, but they didn't have enough original material for that. Uh, enough material that George R. R. Martin, George R. R. Martin had written, so they went with this one. They had they had the uh, book that this is based on, Fire and Blood, which basically tells you about the rise and fall of the Targaryens before um, Robert Baratheon's rise. So that's what this series is based on. And you're seeing characters from that book, that anthology that I actually I should say that um, that history on screen. I have not read it yet. I am going to try to read it before this series drops. I don't think I'll be able to get through all of it before this series drops, but I'll definitely be able to read. um, I'll definitely be able to read it before season two of House of the Dragons if this series is renewed for a second season. I can't believe that it wouldn't be, but if, if for some reason it is not, um, I, I don't see that happen. But for some reason, if it is renewed for a second season, I will have read uh, Fire and Blood before that before the second season begins. I like the dual storylines that they have going in this in this TV series in, the, in season one. They have the young they have the younger versions of the characters, and then they have the older versions of the characters. So you get to see how they were when they were growing up and you get to see what characters they grew into. They did a little bit of this in reverse in Game of Thrones where they had the older character and then they showed like their younger. They showed like flashbacks. So I don't know if they're going to be doing like flashbacks in this series or if they're going to have like whole whole episodes devoted to the younger versions of the characters or if they're going to have like the younger character and then show like the older character or they're going to show like the older character and then show flashbacks of the younger characters. I'm guess, I'm guessing it's going to be like a mixture of both like they did in the, in the, um, the original series, but I think it's going to be more extensive because the, the, um, because they have the histories to work from. So I think that they're going to have longer periods in the past, unlike they did in game of Thrones. So like, like they, they would have like a four minute flashback in game of Thrones so they might have like a whole half episode in the past in say in House of the Dragon because this is about the the Targaryens their um how they were strong and then how they like destroyed each other so i think that that i think that showing the past and present would be would help that along so i think that's what's going to happen so you can see with this you can see like be in this trailer you can see like the betrayal of the key female characters like see right here where they're holding the night where one ha- characters holding a knife and the other characters trying to stab that person. They were like, they like grew up as friends. I'm, I'm assuming because I, as I said, I have not read the book yet. I'm just going by what I've seen in the previous trailers for, um, for this TV series, but that looks like what's happening. And it looks like the King's guard is holding back the other pe the other people. I'm, what I see in that moment is, uh, I believe it's Hightower's daughter, and she's trying to stab uh, Rainey's. And from what I see is, I see Hightower's, um, the people behind her, and then the people that are for Rainey's, which would be the Kingsguard. So the Kingsguard is holding back Hightower's uh, backers or, or whatever is going on there, and they're letting they're letting Rainey's and um, uh, high t- I forget her first name. Um, Hightower, 
go at it with a knife. I'm getting that from the the knife looks like the knife that um that was in the first seasons of Game of Thrones that um that the uh cat's paw tried to use to stab to death um um the Stark child who was paralyzed, Bran. Looks like that's the same knife. So it looks like that knife travels 300 years, you know, never gets destroyed or anything like that, and then ends up in the cat's paw's hand to try to kill um, uh, Brand- Brandon Stark. L- looks like that's the knife that's being used. So that's like a callback to Game of Thrones, and you have other ones as well with the dragon eggs and all, and, and you know, King's Landing and so on and so forth. But looks like they decided to use that knife specifically to, to, uh, to, um, show that the two worlds two worlds are connected along with everything else. So I think that this this uh series looks very good. I, what I am very happy with is that along with everything else, I never got why in Game of Thrones like later in the series you would have main characters fighting without helmets where their where their head is their most important asset, their brain is their most important asset, yet they're fighting in battles these large scale battles without helmets. I never like they did it just to show that the actor is actually in the scene, but that doesn't make sense from a practicality standpoint. Why would you go into battle with, with chest armor and, and, and arm armor, but you would leave your head naked. It never made sense. So in this um, TV series, you're actually seeing people fighting with helmets and it, making it make more sense than it did in Game of Thrones. So I like that addition as well. So I'm looking forward to this and I will be watching in early August. And that brings us to the conclusion of this reaction video. I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comments section. If you like what you heard during this trailer reaction, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please also visit and subscribe to our podcast channel at Filmbook Podcast and our movie and TV show review channel at Filmbook Review. Thank you for viewing. And you can watch one of these videos next.